Hello and welcome to the Anglican Church of St. John the Baptist Dixie in Mississauga, Ontario. I'm Father Daniel Brereton and this is our evening prayer and reflection for Wednesday, June 17th. For those who were unable to find our video last week, uh, I apologize. I was feeling a little under the weather and wasn't able to uh, post our regular online offerings, but I'm feeling better this week and we're back online. Uh, if you would like to take a small candle, if you happen to have one, uh, it's a good to light a little candle as we're beginning. It sets a time, uh, sets apart this time and this space as sacred time and space in which to encounter God uh, and to be reminded by the burning of this candle that uh, the Spirit of God is with us. And tonight we open with a prayer for humility, which is the focus of our reading today. Uh, this prayer comes from uh, one of the uh, well-known saints of the church, the Catholic Church, uh, St. Therese of Lisieux, uh, 19th century Carmelite nun, uh, often known as the little flower of Jesus. And this is her prayer for humility. I beg you, my divine Jesus, to send me a humiliation whenever I try to set myself above others. I know, O oh my God, that you humble the proud, but to the one who humbles oneself, you give an eternity of glory. So I want to put myself in the last rank and to share your humiliations so as to have a share with you in the kingdom of heaven. But you know my weakness, O oh Lord. Every morning I make a resolution to practice humility and in the evening I recognize that I have committed many faults of pride. At this, I am tempted to become discouraged, but I know that discouragement is also pride. Therefore, O oh my God, I want to base my hope in you alone. Since you can do everything, deign to bring to birth in my soul the virtue I desire. To obtain this grace of your infinite mercy, I will very often repeat, O oh Jesus, gentle and humble of heart, make my heart like yours. Our reading this evening uh, comes from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 9, and I'll be reading from the NRSV. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child whom he put among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes. Sundar Singh was a Sikh born in India in 1899. At the age of 16, after a vision of Jesus, he converted to Christianity, having himself baptized in an Anglican church, and for that, his family and most of his community completely ostracized him. Despite this rough beginning, Sundar became one of the church's great missionaries, becoming as famous in his own day as Mother Teresa would later become in ours. One day, after preaching to hundreds of people on the virtue of humility, Sundar was approached by a woman who asked him, when you go places, people clamor to see you. They gather around, they adore you, they praise you, they want to hear every word you have to say. How do you remain humble in the midst of all that? Sundar said, I think of the day when a little donkey entered the city of Jerusalem. 
People were shouting praise before him. They were throwing their cloaks on the road and spreading palm leaves in front of him so he could walk on them. But the donkey knew that all this praise and adulation was not for him, but for the one he carried. And so I tell myself, when I see all this praise and adulation, it isn't for me. I'm just the donkey. Whoever welcomes one such child welcomes me, Jesus said. Jesus is not being sentimental about children here. The very fact that Jesus even took notice of a child probably shocked some of his disciples. In his culture, as has been the case for most of human history, children had little to no status. In many families, they barely ranked above the household slaves because they were a drain on resources and didn't give much back until they could either go out to work or be married off and form an alliance with another family. It was the Victorian age that really turned children into these symbols of purity and innocence. To the people of Jesus' culture, children were valuable more for their future potential, but of little value in and of themselves. Children were powerless and therefore almost worthless in the eyes of the world. The very ones, the powerless, worthless ones that the kingdom of God had come for. So when Jesus picks up a child and says, whoever welcomes one such as these welcomes me, he's not telling the disciples simply to welcome the pure and the innocent, nor is he telling them simply that they are to themselves become spiritually pure like this innocent lamb. Rather, he's telling these passionate, zealous men that they must recognize their own powerlessness and dependence on God, just as a child has to be dependent on on his or her parents. He is telling them to have the humility to be leaders in the kingdom, which they were soon to become after his death and resurrection. And so their job and ours, as Jesus' disciples today, is to be concerned about the very ones that no one else in society is concerned about, to notice the ones that no one else notices the ones our society has deemed of less value because of their age, because of their ability, because of their gender, because of the color of their skin, because of their sexual orientation. Our concern as disciples of Jesus cannot be ingratiating ourselves with the powerful, but serving the powerless and those too often crushed by society's power. Our focus cannot be on how to preserve what we've built and how to exercise our power over others, but on how to use what God has given us and to use God's power, which is love and forgiveness, to help those who cannot help themselves. Jesus tells us that the first will be last and the last first. He tells us to put ourselves last, not as performative displays of humility, but because when we are last, we can see who else is being left behind. We don't need to be up front because Jesus is already there doing the leading. We are called to follow and to trust him. And if we find that in some place or another, God has put us in a leadership position, if we do find ourselves at the front of the procession, so to speak, let us remember that we've been put there to serve the admiration, the applause, the power, and the prestige, those are for the Lord. We're just the donkey carrying him. And now remembering Christ's call to us to depend on him with trust and to serve him with humility, let us pray the words he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Thank you for joining me this evening, for spending a few minutes to uh, hear God's word and to reflect, and hopefully you'll continue to reflect on how that word is speaking into your own life. Whoever welcomes one such as this child welcomes me. Know that you, as a beloved child of God, are welcomed into God's kingdom. May you share and uh, extend that welcome to all of God's children. And until we meet again, may God bless you and keep you.